Where is the song from? <laughs> Who know this beat right here? I know y'all know it. Where is it from? I found my speaker. Where this instrument is from? Now why? You got me on hold that long. Why am I on hold that long? I'm about to hang up. Because really, folks be on hold so long, you got to start rapping on the beat. <laughs> Who can admit to that? How many of y'all done rapped on that beat? Because boy, they be having you on hold so long. You be like, why am I on hold that long? Like, really? It ain't even, I will call you back because I'm about to hang up. I will call back another day. Matter of fact, I might not even call back. It is what it is. How many people be on that line and it be taking forever for them to pick up? Why do they be having us on hold like that? And you know what's crazy, y'all? about being on hold like that and how irritated it is to be on hold that long and you got things to do. That's how God be feeling about a lot of people. They be having them on hold forever. And he be just sitting there waiting, waiting for them to surrender their life to him. Sitting there showing mercy, grace, being long-suffering on hold for a lot of y'all. To come into his will for you, for your life. The will he has for your life. God be on hold. Y'all be having God on hold. And God be feeling like I'm about to hang up on you. Because how long you going to keep me on hold? How long do I got to sit here and wait for you to pick up the call? And surrender all. So that's what I want to talk to y'all about. Why do y'all be having God on hold? And how long do y'all think he going to wait? That noise is so irritating, especially. Let me play it again. You be sitting there like, really? How long is I'm supposed to wait? You think just because this song playing is supposed to make me want to wait longer? They be having you on hold forever with this song playing. But that's how God feel. He on hold in a lot of y'all lives. Y'all got him on hold. And God's sitting there like, how long you expect me to wait? How long you expect me to stay on the line? How long do you expect me to put up with your mess? When I'm offering you a way out. I'm offering you salvation. I'm offering you life. I'm offering you help. I'm willing to step into your situation and turn it around. But you got me on hold. That's how God feel. When we got him on hold, we putting him off to Muslim. I'll, I'll give my life to God next year. I'll go to church another week. I'll go to church another day. And you got God on hold. 
For what? For what? That's the question. What is worth putting God on hold? Your life already a struggle. Your life already a mess. You already going through things you don't feel like you can handle. And yet and still you keeping God on hold. Why? Why? And God is like, I'm about to hang up. I'm not going to always be here the way that you think that I should. Let's read Genesis. chapter. Let's start at Genesis chapter 6. I'm using my phone too so I can go through these scriptures. I'm not going to be on here long. But let's just break it down how God feel when people have him on hold. God said in Genesis chapter 6 verse 3, he said, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with men. My spirit shall not always strive with men. God not going to always be there for you. He not going to always show you mercy and grace in your life. He not going to always put up with your mess. So God said, my spirit will not always strive with men. I'm not, God said, I'm not going to sit in heaven and watch you live a corrupt and rebellious life to my word and always be there for you, allow you to live a life of peace and safety. Because I'm not going to always strive with men. Let's read um, 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. Chapter 3. I'm going to give y'all some scriptures because God not going to always put up with people. Just like we not going to always put up with people, God not going to always put up with us. Because God is too good. He is too merciful. He has already made ways for us. He's already made the path for us to take. Let's read that. So let's read 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 20. And it says, Which sometime were disobedient when once the long serpent God waited on the days of Noah, Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. So the Bible says that there was a time in the days of Noah when Noah was building the ark, and God was allowing people to, to come to him in that time when Noah was building that ark before the flood. Noah was being uh, a witness of what was about to come upon the earth because of the sins and the corruption and the disobedience and the evil and the wickedness of men's hearts. And so God told Noah to build an ark. And while Noah was building that ark, he was a testimony. He was a witness to all the people around him. There was no water nowhere. And Noah was building this big old boat. At a wit as a witness to these people that God was a getting ready to judge the earth. And I'm pretty sure Noah was telling them, it's about the rain. There is about to be rain. And in those times, it never rained on the earth. And so Noah was building this boat, and people was probably walking past like, what's wrong with dude? Why is he building this boat? It ain't no water nowhere. Why would he build a boat in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of a desert, in the middle of a dry place? But yet and still, they didn't stop to figure out what was going on. They just went about their life, went about partying, went about getting married, went about building their lifestyles. Didn't think nothing of it until the day that the rain came and the flood hit the earth and everything in the earth was destroyed. Why? Because of sin, because of rebellion, because of evil and wickedness of people's heart. And we are in the same exact times today. But God is like, why are you keeping me on hold when I'm sending people to tell you the truth? I'm sending people to warn you of what's about to happen in this earth. I'm sending people to let you know that the times are short, that people are wicked, that this world is going down. And yet and still, you got God on hold. You putting them off until you get older. You putting them off until you done partying. You putting them off until you get your last drink and your last smoke in. For what? God is like, why are you keeping me on hold when I'm sending you warning? The, it's known in the Bible that God always sends a warning before he destroys any people. He always sends a warning. And this is your warning today that God said, I'm about to get ready to hang up. 
because you got me on hold too long. I'm sitting here waiting and waiting and waiting for you to pick up my call. And yet and still you got me on hold. And people think it's a game. People think God going to always be there for them. And then all of a sudden there's a shooting in the bar or there's a shooting wherever you at. Somebody getting stabbed. Somebody getting murdered. And people wonder why. Because God has been on hold for too long. He is long suffering. Let me read that scripture. In uh, Psalms, I believe. 86. Psalms 86. Let's go to Psalms 86. People think God is just, he just going to deal with you. But no, God is truly long suffering. This is why he put up with what he put up with. This is why he's showing grace and mercy. Because the Bible say that what people count, count as slack with God. I'm going to read that too. Well, let's read that first. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. I'm going to go to that first. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. I'm going to use my phone because it takes me forever to go to the book. <laughs> 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. What does it say? The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Do you understand that? So why people thinking, Oh, I'm good. I'm still alive. I can do whatever I wanted to. Ain't nothing happened to me yet. Ain't nothing bad ever happened to me. But God is long-suffering. He is gracious. He is merciful. But don't count his long-suffering and his patience because he don't want any man to perish. He don't want you to go to hell for eternity. He don't want you to burn forever. So he's long-suffering towards you. He is patient. He is merciful. He is waiting on the call waiting. He waiting for you to pick up. But don't count it slackness that God is just going to put up with it because the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. So do not keep God on hold forever because of his goodness and his grace like Psalms 86 says. Psalms 86 says, Psalms 86, let's read it, Psalms 86, verse 15, but thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion, full of grace and long suffering, plenteous in mercy and truth. God is so merciful that he is waiting on you. He is literally waiting on you. He's sending people like me and all the people who get online and try to be a witness to you. All the people who share the services where the gospel is being preached online to be a light, to be a beacon, in a beacon in a dark place like a lighthouse. To warn you of the destruction that is to come. But a lot of y'all got God on hold like he going to be there forever. Like he going to be there forever. But he not. He not, and I'm sad to tell y'all that, but it's the truth. God will not always strive with men, like I said in the beginning. Like in Genesis chapter 6, God already declared that in the beginning, that he will not always strive with men. But God is saying, I'm waiting on you, but you is taking too long to submit to my will, to submit to my way. So how long do you expect me to wait on you? Half of us can't even wait on the call waiting when we on hold. When that song is playing and we on that hold, we be like, I am about to hang up. Day is taking too long. Why is it taking so long for us to answer the call that God has for us? The call that he has put out for people to listen to, to submit to his will. Let's read Nehemiah chapter 9. How God be sending out the call. Waiting on the line for you. Sending out the messages. Letting you know, I'm here. I'm here. But you have to answer the call. You have to pick up the line. Because I'm not going to sit here and be on hold forever. Nehemiah chapter 9. That's my son's name, Nehemiah. <laughs> chapter 9. Verse 30. This is how God see it. Yet many years... Did I forbear with them? 
Many years God be waiting for you. Many years God allow you to wake up every morning by his grace and his mercy. He said, yet many years did I forbear with them. Did I show grace and long suffering and mercy. Yet many years, I mean, and testified against them by the spirit and thy prophets. God is testifying to you through his spirit, through me. I have the spirit of God in me which has given me a mind and compassion to get on here and share the love of God and share the truth with you. I've been doing this for years. Go on my videos. I've been on live for years trying to tell y'all that Jesus is about to come back, that God is not going to be waiting on y'all to get saved forever. And it says, let's keep reading. Yet would they not give ear, therefore gavest thou them into the hand of the people of the land. Nevertheless, for thy great mercy's sake, thou did not utterly consume them, nor forsake them. For thou art gracious and merciful God. So God is letting you know in his word that it's been many times where God had to give the people that he loved over to the enemy. Because they not giving ear to the warnings, to the testimonies, to the messages that God is sending through his people. And so he had to allow the enemy to consume them as a witness to the fact that God is not going to always put up with mess. He didn't want to. But God is so good and so merciful, like the scripture said. He allowing us. He said, nevertheless, for thy great mercy's sake, thou did not utterly consume them. For his mercy's sake, he not allowing you to be consumed to this very day. He allowing you to breathe every day. He allowing you to live in the body that he formed in the womb of your mother. He allowing you to breathe the breath that he had breathed into you because of his mercy and his grace. But God will not always be merciful and gracious to those that will not submit to the call and the warning that is being put out. He will not always do it. There are many stories in the Bible how God had to let his people be consumed because they will not submit to his will, will not submit to his word, will not submit to the warnings. And so God is like, well, since they won't listen, I can't continue to protect them because they in rebellion, which means the sin is separating me from them. So I can't continue to put my favor and my anointing on them because they don't represent me no more. So to those of y'all that don't know God, God is so merciful to you. And all of the people that click on this video, this is a testimony to you in the day of judgment that when you face God, he gonna remind you of the day that you clicked on this video and you listened to however long you listen to this video but you heard the warning and God is going to bring this video to your remembrance on the day of judgment and you're going to remember that you watched this video and you're going to be before God and be like oh yeah I did watch that I did hear what she was saying but you know what my party was more important than that my drinking and my smoking was more important than that right now me doing things my own way was more important to me and you're going to have to face God and say that you didn't listen. And what God going to do? He going to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. For I never knew you. Look at my video. I did a video all talking about how God will say to a lot of people, I don't know you like that. Because a lot of people think they're going to heaven. But the Bible says, except the man is born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. What is the water and the spirit? The baptism in the name of Jesus Christ and the infilling of his spirit, which is the Holy Ghost. And Jesus told everybody in the Bible, in the book of John, chapter 3, verse 5 through 7, Jesus said, you must be born again of water and of spirit, or you will not see the kingdom of heaven. And a lot of people is not listening and so God ain't got no choice but to say, depart from me. Mar, you can get up, baby. You ain't got to hide. What you doing? Go ahead, baby. You can. Well, you're going to be in the video, baby, because it's right behind me. So you can get a banana or some fruit. You can do that. 
The banana is right there, baby. Uh, yeah. And but it's it's frozen fruit in the freezer. If you want some frozen fruit. So God is saying, I don't lost my train. So I had it. my daughter was trying to sneak it in because <laughs> she didn't want to be in the video. But God is saying, I'm not. I'm already giving you. I'm already giving you the instructions. And I'm already giving you the way of life. But I'm not going to always wait on you to come and do what I'm calling you to do. Because he said my spirit would not always strive with me. God not going to always put up with our mess. He's not going to always wait on the line for us to pick up. So people got God on hold. And God is like, okay, I'm waiting for you to pick up the call. I'm waiting, just like we be on the call waiting. We be like, oh my goodness, I'm about to hang up this phone if they don't pick it up. I got things to do. And God feel the same way. God got things to do in your life. But if you continue to wait and put him on wait, call hold, call waiting, I mean, keep him on hold with the music playing in the background. Because you partying, you drinking, you living your best life, YOLO. But his word, I ain't even drink none of my tea. But his word is still standing. His word is still alive. This, all of this is coming to pass right now as we speak. His word is coming to pass right now. Just like these prophets spoke thousands of years ago. It's happening right now, just like God said will be happening in the last days. And yet and still people got God on hold. To do whatever they heart desire. And the stuff that they heart desire is destroying them at the same time. But you don't want to give heed to what the word say. And it's real, it's true, it's alive, it's coming to pass as we speak. And God is like, okay. Okay, I'm waiting. I'm sending my people to tell y'all. I'm sending the warning. But you're not listening. So let me read 2 Chronicles chapter 36 and 15. Let's read this. Because y'all think it's a game. It's not a game. When it comes to God, it's not a game. When it comes to life and where you will spend your eternity, this flesh is going to die one day. Whether you believe it or not, one day you're going to have to die. We don't know how. We don't know when we're going to die. I'm going to have to die one day. <laughs> Literally, one day is going to be my day. If the Lord don't tarry and he don't take me to heaven during the rapture. But one day I'm going to have to face God. And I'm going to have to talk to him about everything I did in this body that he allowed me to live in. And I'm either going to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Or I'm going to hear, depart from me, you work of iniquity, for I never knew you. So all of us is going to have to face this God that the Bible talks about. This God that people be sharing posts about. We're all going to have to face him and give account of our lives lined up with his word. And what are we going to say? You better get to reading it and finding out the way that he expects us to live. Because we can cry all day and make posts all day about how we love God and how we need him. But if we're not reading his word and learning about him, it's in vain. It's pointless. It's pointless. So I'm trying to tell somebody today, let's read 2 Chronicles, that warning comes before destruction. And God is not going to wait on the line forever. He's not going to be gracious and merciful to us forever. It goes for me too. If I decide one day to wake up and say, you know what, God, I'm done living according to your word. I'm about to put you on hold and go live my best life and go live according to the lust of my flesh and the pride of my life. I'm going to be held accountable for that. And God knows if he will allow me to continue to live and breathe, knowing that I forsook his way. And I knew better. I can't do that. Because I know too much already. So my grace is really cut short. But he is even more gracious to you because he's trying to allow you to come to the knowledge of the truth of his word. But you cannot let the lust of the flesh and the pride of life consume you and allow you to miss out on such a great opportunity of salvation which was given to you by your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through his death, burial, and resurrection. Jesus died a horrible death so that you can have eternal life, so that you can take God off hold. So let's read 2 Chronicles. Let's read 2 Chronicles 
chapter 36. Chapter 36, verse 15. And the Lord God of their father sent to them messengers rising up and sending because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they mocked the messenger of God and they despised his words and misused his prophets until the wrath of God arose against his people till there was no remedy. It's a lot of people who probably be laughing at me. It's a lot of people that probably be like, oh, here she go again. God this, God that. Get saved this, get saved that. We in the last days. Jesus is coming. It's a lot of people who be doing, probably doing that. But I don't care because I know the word of God is real and it's true. And especially now, especially now, the way stuff is breaking records, the way evil is in this earth, just like the Bible said, perilous times shall come for men will be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. That wickedness shall, uh, that wickedness shall grow. I can't think of the word increase. The wickedness of men heart shall increase. People's heart will be hardened against the truth of God and the knowledge of his word. Evil has definitely increased in this earth, just like God said in the last day. We here. Things are going on in Israel like the Bible prophesied will be happening. It's all coming to pass. The mark of the beast is here. It's already being foreshadowed. In the midst of this generation. The Antichrist is rising up through AI. It's all happening. And I'm trying to warn y'all. But a lot of people are mocking me. Laughing at me. Putting up their hand. Clicking away. Probably blocking me. Deleting me as their friend. Because they don't want to hear the truth. They like, oh no. I, I, I got to go drink. I'm trying to kick it today. I ain't trying to hear about the Bible today. <laughs> That's how a lot of people is. Oh, here she go again. But because I love you, because God loves you, he put his spirit in me to speak to you the truth and to warn you of destruction that is to come and to let you know a lot of y'all, this is y'all for a lot of people that's going to hear this. It's probably going to be your final warning. This is probably going to be the last time God allow you to hear the truth. Because God is not going to always strive with men. He's not going to always put up with our mess and our rebellion, our wickedness, our evilness against his word. And because God is just, he has to exemplify that he mean what he say. And unfortunately, a lot of people are going to have to be made examples out of. Just like he made examples out of certain groups of people that was called to serve him in the Bible. They had to be consumed. They had to be destroyed. Because God is not going to allow his grace and his mercy, his anointing and his provision to be upon a people who do not honor and obey his word. Not for a long time. So I'm warning you. Let me read. Let me read this. Let me read this again. 15 through 16. And the Lord God their father sent to them by his messengers and sending because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God and despised his word and misused his prophets until the wrath of God arose against his people so there was no remedy. When God's wrath come against you, when God takes his grace off of you and his mercy off of your life, and you faced with death, it ain't nothing you can say. It's over. You know how many people on their deathbed was like, God, please. And he was like, no, I gave you enough time. I sent you a warning already. I told you this was going to happen if you continue down the road that you are on. But you decided not to listen. And so now you in your day of calamity and you expect me to show up and show out for you, but you never responded to the call. You kept me on hold for too long, my son and my daughter. 
So don't keep God on hold. Answer the call. Pick up the call waiting. Because this is a lot of people's last warning. I'm sorry, I have to say it. That's what the Spirit wants me to say. This is a lot of people's last and final warning. Summertime is coming. And, and, it's, and it's sad to say, but it's the truth. But a lot of people die during the summertime. A lot of people go during the summer. Because people are wicked. And people are led away by the pride of life and by the lust of their flesh. And people's heart are not compassionate. People killing their mamas. People killing their grandmas. Precious grandma. People are murdering their precious grandmothers. Their mothers and their fathers. Without a, even a second thought over stupid stuff. People murdering their best friends. Family members. People they grew up with. Not even second thinking it. People dying and being murdered every single day. And it's getting hot outside, y'all. And it's sad to say, during the summertime, a lot of people don't make it. So I'm warning you and I'm begging you, answer the call. Take God off hold because he is about to hang up. Please. Because dying in your sins is not what you want to happen. Everybody not going to heaven, my dear precious and brothers and sisters. And you especially not going if you not have submitted to Acts 2 and 38, which says, repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We are in the last days. Take God off hold. Take him off hold. And I guarantee you, God is going to take care of the rest. But submit and obey Acts 2 and 38. I love y'all. I hope this helps somebody. But please give heed to this warning. Because God loves you so much that he allowed me to come on here and be bold enough to tell you in love. So God bless y'all.